um, back with a vlog for my uh, fourth and fifth day of traveling in Japan. Now it's actually the sixth day and uh, it's just before we leave to Hiroshima. But before that, uh, I'd like to cover a few things about how the last two days went. We spent two nights in Osaka, so pretty much hardly any of that time was actually spent in Osaka. Uh, on the first day we visited Nara and uh, hopped on a train going uh, through a more rural landscape, a slower pace, uh, it was a number of uh, nice views uh, where it went through the valleys, tunnels, um, yeah. Uh, with a nice river toward the side. Pretty much our entire day was spent uh, uh, walking through the park. Um, we arrived there, uh, we arrived at the train station, we went to the tourist center, got ourselves uh, a totally overpriced day ticket for use of the bus, which we really didn't need to buy. Um, bus cost 220 yen per person, um, so the return ticket would have cost us for 40, but we actually paid 500 for a day pass, even though we only use a bus twice. Uh, but yeah, no, we uh, got on bus, uh, got to the official disembarkment spot uh, for viewing the deer and the park, and uh, we started by feeding the deer. Uh, pretty much all of them uh, have been taught to bow multiple times uh, to get their uh, biscuits, the crackers. It's uh, quite a curious event because, uh, yeah, often deer can be associated with being a bit dull, but they clearly were taught, and even the young ones um, know to start bowing or try to. They're definitely not as practiced as their uh, older, um, as all the as all the deer. A large chunk of the deer population is actually supported by the local, both local and international tourists, uh, most of whom are buying two hundred yen worth of uh, large crackers uh, to feed the deer. Uh, without the tourists, uh, it would not be possible to sustain such a large population. Um, Nara Park has a number of different interesting places that uh, we went to. Uh, the first one is uh, the Daiji, a massive temple with a large Buddha statue that acts as one of the main uh, <laughs> three tourist attractions. Um, yeah. It is quite an interesting place, and probably the biggest Buddha I've ever seen in my life, but uh, um, yeah, really well done. Um, it definitely towers over you as uh, you're walking. Uh, Tadaiji uh, Nikatsudo was another small temple that we visited uh, on the way to um, a shrine uphill. Uh, it is a small temple located on the cliffside, and uh, a large number of tourists avoid trekking all the way uphill um, or stick to the main walkways. So it was a very quiet, uh, nice area, um, yeah, with wonderful views toward the city. Um, afterwards, we uh, uh, ascended all the way up to Tamoekawa Hig ah, Ichimango Shrine. Uh, it's a shrine located uh, at uh, about, uh, I would say, uh, one half of the way towards uh, the actual mountain. Uh, it's about 170 meters, uh, while the mountain is 340 or so, I think. Um, yeah, it acts as uh, the second most popular attraction and the many tourists already avoid hiking up 100 or so meters, so way few people there compared to at the bottom of the park. Um, 
a fair number of local, locals um, do prayer uh, before moving on with their lives. Uh, they come in, they, uh, they bow, they clap, they think about their prayer, and afterwards they bow again, and walk away. Yeah, and quite a few people do that. Uh, it does seem to be limited by age either, uh, both uh, young and old do this. Uh, male and female. Uh, that seems to be just a part of the culture. And once there was also a third tourist attraction uh, which we walked to. It was a large pagoda um, but a large chunk of it was uh, in reconstruction um, so we didn't spend much time there. Once we were done with the park we uh, ended the day going back to Osaka, uh, staying in a short queue uh, to get <laughs> some uh, food from Victoria Bar and restaurant uh, and it was amazing, really loved the uh, meat skewers, all the different varieties, uh, uh, beef, chicken, pork uh, with green onions, uh, a mini version of shashlik, loved it. Um, and afterwards we uh, went um, to check out uh, Shinsekai, which is um, like in pretty close to us, uh, sadly don't get to see it out of the window, uh, but it's very close. Um, it is uh, a night, one of the nightlife areas uh, in uh, Osaka. Um, you see a number of uh, neon signs, uh, bustling uh, population, uh, people walking back and forth, uh, going towards the restaurants, uh, uh, restaurants and bars, uh, gambling places as well, I think. And uh, we also saw some like kids and adults uh, trying to catch um, their own food as well. Uh, there was a restaurant uh, we, where uh, there was a dedicated area uh, with uh, like uh, smaller compartments where you had to either use a um, uh, fishing rod or you had to use a net to catch some fish which would be cooked for your dinner. Uh, quite a curious thing uh, <laughs> if you want to feel a bit more primal uh, and also a bit more fun. Um, while trying to get some dinner. Uh, neither of us were very interested in drinks, so we just walked around uh, and enjoyed the ambience and the atmosphere. On the second day, uh, due to minor miscalculation, uh, Emma sent us uh, via <laughs> the more quaint side of Kurashiki um, uh, oh. station Google sent Chia us. Maishi. Google sent us. Google sent us, of course. Along with them. Uh, where we uh, happened uh, to uh, hop on the bus uh, to the historic quarter. Most of the day was uh, spent meandering through the streets of the historic quarter and visiting a number of uh, old houses. Some people call Krashiki the Venice um, of Japan, so apparently many other places uh, want to call themselves this one too. Um, so whether it is a Venice or whether it's not, eh, who knows, but uh, it does certainly feel that way. Um, it is a uh, very popular place, um, uh, so many local tourists. Uh, the gondola rides uh, were sold out uh, by the time we got uh, to the town, so I guess it would have been nice to leave uh, a couple of hour hours earlier, um, but uh, c'est la vie. Other than 
So just other than just the enjoying the ambience, um, probably the main highlights highlights were uh, children eating swans uh, 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 on the back of one of the main canal. Um, the afterwards, other than the kids, I think the other two were uh, the um, two houses of uh, very rich merchants. Uh, one of them was a former Haras residence, which felt a bit more like a brag than uh, the usual living place, um, but had a neat library, uh, it had a beautiful garden, uh, it had a family tree, um, it was interesting. Uh, and the other one was uh, the Hashi's house. Um, and the Hashi's house on, was uh, very much a more lived in Japanese place. Uh, quite spacious, divided into many rooms. Um, it had its, uh, a number of uh, smaller inner gardens inside of the um, house itself. Uh, it had its own uh, shrine, a study, um, yeah, uh, I can definitely, uh, and the old, most of the floors were the town floors. I could definitely imagine like uh, this being an uh, upper merchant house. Um, in fact, actually it was an ex-noble house uh, who uh, uh, was exiled from a place uh, where he was before, for some reason or another, I think for losing, for being on the side uh, that lost some battles. Uh, so he went away, came back to this area uh, where he uh, used some of his money to uh, uh, start um, rice farms and he made a butt ton of money on that, uh, which is how he got to build the house and uh, become one of the main merchants, or the most well-known merchants for this town. Um, yeah, and we ended the, the day uh, trip to Krashki by uh, staying in a uh, decent queue uh, to get local peach ice cream, uh, which was uh, pretty expensive, uh, but very nice. Um, it was... Uh, yeah, like juicy, juicy peach. Loved it. And the ice cream itself was uh, a mix of uh, fruit chunks, um, yogurt, uh, ice vanilla ice cream, and a few other things. It is like a stacked ice cream. Is it parfait? Parfait, there you go. Um, yeah. What else can I say about it? It was a nice treat. I would never probably do it myself again, um, but I wanted to eat one of the larger, oversized Japanese fruits. Um, melon, grapes, uh, peaches, uh, and I certainly ticked that off, like I was planning to. Um, what else to say? F I think really just to end the day. Um, finally, uh, we were a bit in a bit of a rush to get to Okayama and to get to Okayama Castle. Uh, it is a midpoint between uh, uh, Kurashiki and um, uh, Osaka, where we spent the last night um, by travel, not by distance. And uh, just to get there, we got there quite late at. Uh, Pretty much um, like a 455, 457, uh, while the place was uh, closing for visitors at 5 and uh, fully, fully closing down at 5.30. So we uh, rushed there with uh, at a pretty brisk pace, um, met some models on the side waving at us uh, uh, and afterwards uh, yeah, I uh, got to actually enter the Crow's Castle, uh, 
It's a cross castle because uh, there are few castles who were uh, painted black in Japan. Um, this specific castle was uh, painted black to uh, uh, probably for multiple reasons. Uh, what the brochure said was uh, it was uh, to instill fear and a uh, few other um, angry emotions, but uh, the other thing is uh, generally it is quite hard to keep up uh, the black um, on a castle, so it was likely also a brag from the local lord, the local daimyo as well. Yeah, the castle itself uh, looks uh, lovely from the outside, uh, but it was entirely destroyed uh, in World War II, so it was just a replica uh, with uh, pretty much everything inside made out of concrete for the purpose of uh, convenience and accessibility. Uh, there were a couple of uh, museums inside uh, with different swords and other trinkets. Uh, and there was an elevator pretty much all the way up top. Um, yeah, uh, where the views were sadly limited, um, uh, there was no open platform. You couldn't walk around. Uh, the only views were out of the windows. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, uh, that's how we spend the day.